Let's go. that I can't with you. Nice watch. Yep. It's gonna be a cold one. few minutes, you're gonna feel so warm, you think you was dead. Who are you? Oh, my. Who's the man on the horse? Who is he? We're all here for the same purpose. Get some sleep. He looks tired, doesn't he? Charlie, Charlie thinks you look tired. Why don't you get some shut eye? What's your name? My name? Farley Deeds. I'm Morrison. Where are you headed, Deeds? Well, I'm I'm headed uh I'm headed east to Jacksonville. What do you want to go there for? Well, I'm I'm married, my wife's there. Why is your wife visiting Jacksonville? It's a family matter. What kind of family matters? My mother is ill. I would ask you what's wrong with the lady, but I can see you're not too deeply interested in conversation. You know, if you would answer my question, maybe I would be more concerned about answering yours. Besides, weren't you the one who said to stop talking and go to sleep? And sound advice it was, too. Fine. Good night. Getting cold. 
it can get mighty cold. See, a lot of people don't know just how cold it can get, but I can tell you. I was all over Missouri ways with this fella Tinks, scalp hunter. Hospitable fella Tinks. We were passing through town on my first week out. He asked me if I'd ever spent the night in these parts. No, I says. He suggested that I get a blanket or two. I will, I said. Nice warm day, too, like this one. You're out warm, aren't you, Deeds? So I'm sitting out on the mesa inside of Cherokee territory near Fort Lynn. No cover at all, no trees, nothing. Night started to creep in, and the temperature drop fell like a stone, below zero, further. So I commenced jumping around like a beat little square dance. Got scared, real scared. Would have died, too, but got lucky. This buffalo came by, and I dropped it with my shops, carved him up, crawled right inside his gutted hide. Yes, sir. Nice and warm. So if you get cold and you need a blanket, you let me know. Am I supposed to believe that? Don't believe it. I don't care. I have plenty of blankets, and I thank you. Good night. Long way to travel for a woman. You must fancy she's pretty special. Yes, I do. Got a picture of her? My mother's ill. I'm going east to meet my wife. She's visiting my mother. We didn't know if she'd make it till Christmas when we usually visit her, so we're visiting her now. Can I have that back, please? Mm. Now that is worth something. Please. I've been everywhere. Everywhere this side of the big river. Kentucky. This other side, I ain't never been there. I practically lived in the desert this past year, but... That'll be over soon enough. So you're married? Yes. You like it, I bet. Very much. I don't think I'd like it. What's that supposed to mean? That I wouldn't like it, Deeds. Now, don't take offense at that, too. Well, how can you be so crack sure? Maybe your nights wouldn't be so cold and lonely if you had a wife. Listen! I was married! I hated it! I see. You're probably right. Good night. I like to think of myself as a philanderer. You know what that means? Yes. Oh. Well, that's what I am. Oh, my, my, my. What a surprise. Well, I don't doubt that it would be to you. And there's a number of other things a city boy like you would not guess that I am. Well, Sonny, I thought I'd be happy to see another person after a year to myself, but I was wrong. 
And don't think I'm so stupid. I didn't see that carbine you got stuck on your bedroll. And that pistol, and it's a fine one, too, got stuck on your pillow. I'd move those to a safe place if I was you. You'd love to blow your head and your nuts off playing with yourself tonight. Listen, you corpulent buzzard. I did not invite you into this camp to listen to the spew just who the hell do you think you are. What about the Derringer up your greasy sleeve? And the shotgun and the sharps you have on that sooty fly farm you call a horse. Correct me if I'm wrong, Gramps. But isn't that a pistol not 20 inches from your big mouth? A Remington judging from its sloppy bulge? If you wish to plant yourself elsewhere, please go. But if you are going to squat there, at least keep quiet. Well... I think you might be good for a round or two yet. I don't care what you think! You want to hear a story? City boy. What kind of a story? Say something, city boy. I asked to know what kind of story. What did suit you? Horror story. Oh. One that'll make bats fly out of your ears and your tongue blaze like a Marrakesh pig. You're not the weak hearted sort, are your deeds? Do you have a story or not? Don't get smart. I won't tell it. <clears throat> a few years ago, when there was millions of Indians, see, they covered this land like buffaloes. Living their Indian ways and practicing their strange tribal rites. Tribes varied, as they will do, but one hard and fast rule known to damn near every white man was that you don't go kicking around their cemeteries because that's sacred ground. Not so important today, seeing as we killed most of them off. We're gonna lose all but a few of their customs since none of them ain't never been written down. But one I can tell you, a right and a white man's encounter with it. An old goat named uh, Lee Colby. Now, he knew better than to cross that sacred soil, but he'd lost a half a day already, and there was nothing he'd like better than to make it up. You see? There weren't nothing to be afraid of. It's a lot of nonsense. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. For a minute back there, I really believed all this. Nothing to be afraid of. Stupid. Plain stupid. More fools on this patch of dirt just gave up. Quit. You won't find me lying down and dying peaceable. Let myself decompose. You, you'll give up. Look what happens. Come on, boy. Can't you talk? I wish I 
wish you could. I'd asked you how a great man like yourself can just lay back and give his life away. What's happening? What's happening? You understand me, old friend? I guess your temper up here is just let me know. Ooh. You didn't have to bite my head off to prove the point. <laughs> you old fool. Rest in peace. Hell! I gotta get out of here. Don't they ever stop?
Morrison. That's almost beautiful. I mean, it's bizarre. It's certainly bizarre. But there was so much more there. You didn't like it. I loved it. But I want to know what you thought of when you told it. I mean, it seemed to me about so much more than a, than a man being punished for passing through an Indian burial ground. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, why did you make Lee an old man? Lee was an old man. Exactly. So why did you end the story on an image of children burying this old man? Deeds. It's a story. You tell it, and there it is. But, but it wasn't that terrifying. I thought you liked it. I did, but it seemed more about dying or an old man's fear of death than about breaking an Indian taboo. How much did you add? The what? The ritual. Deeds! It's about Indians! <laughs> what could be plainer than that? And as for being true or not, I told it exactly as I remembered it, word for word. Come on, Morrison. I mean, you remember a lot, but there were so many details to your story, so many. Look, I'm not saying that you're lying, but I'm suggesting that some of it might have been prevarication. Let me put this another way. Don't you think it's incredible that Indians would go so far out of their way to put a man so gruesomely to death simply on account he went through a stupid graveyard? I should have dog-legged around you the minute I saw your campfire. Well, did you or not? What is incredible, Deeds, is that you made it this far not knowing two spits and half a fart about the very country over which you cross. OK, I have a lot to learn. I admit it. But I wish you'd be honest enough to admit that your story wasn't all true. Word for word. Horse shit. Oh, I take it by that remark. You don't want to hear another. Do you want another cup of coffee? No, I don't. Well? Well, what? You gotta tell another. I gotta do nothing. Give me another cup. This story, Deeds, is about a young fella, not unlike yourself. This store clerk named Tom Woodby found himself traveling alone, up by the Great Divide those grassy hills that roll on just about forever. He was a modest sort, city worker, hat and coat not unlike yours. And he was slogging along, letting the sunset lull him into thoughts of his pretty wife to whom he was going home to see. afraid. I ain't gonna hurt you. I'm Tom Woodby, ma'am. Tom Woodby, No, don't! I only wondered if you might be lost or something. I didn't mean to frighten you. Are you alone? I'll be, uh, pitching camp real soon. You're more than welcome to join me if you like. It would be my pleasure if you'd join me. Can I help you get somewhere? Hope you'll pardon my forwardness, but are you lost? No. I'm alone. My fault. Sir, 
right, you don't have to do that. I'm fine. Just looking for a place to camp, not paying attention. If you don't think it's too far, there's a flat spot just up ahead. Pardon me, I'm sorry. Well, I was just saying, if it doesn't look too far, there's a level spot right fine. up there. It looks like a good camp. That, that'd be fine. Ma'am? What? May I stop calling you, ma'am? I'm sorry. That's all right. It's all right. Jenny Turberville. My name's Jenny. Jenny? You warm enough? I didn't know I got this cold at night. No, I couldn't. Come on. No, I couldn't. Excuse me. You're a good man, Tom. Can't imagine how afraid I was up there. I was so afraid about who was going to come across me or who I was going to come across. I'm very lucky that you found me and that you took care of me the way you've done. I guess you probably figured why I'm out here by myself. Thank you, Jenny, but you don't have to tell me anything. I was thrown out. I was thrown out of the town that I lived in. Well, look. I'll take you to the nearest town, and I'll see to it that you're taken care of and that you've got a place to stay. You're too kind. No. I mean, I... I mean, I tell you, anyone will do the same. I'm just concerned like anyone. Anyone? Anyone who can't see beyond that ritual of marriage, it's just stupid. And it's not worth the pain it causes you. Now listen, Jenny. Everything's gonna be all right. Please. Just try not to think about it. You're a good man, Tom. Thank you for everything. I'm sorry I lied. I had to lie. I couldn't tell whether I could trust you or not, whether or not you were a good man. But you're different, Tom. You are a good man. You... You're not pregnant. I felt safer that way. When people see you're pregnant, they treat you differently. I did it because of the men that came before you. But you're different. I don't want to pretend with you, Tommy. You're a good man. You're a decent man. Please don't do anything to me. You're not gonna hurt me, Tommy. I know you're not gonna hurt me. I mean, you're not like them. Please, Tommy. Please. Please don't do anything to me. Don't. Don't. Oh, Jenny. Oh, Jenny. Thank you. 
so she resumed her journey afresh, pregnant again, alone as before. More coffee deeds? That's terrible. You think so? Yeah. I'm sick, you're disturbed. What was wrong with it? Well, it's, it's disgusting. It's just sick. Where did you dredge up a story like that? You were listening to it pretty good. Yeah, but I had no idea what was going to happen next. Well, it'd be a pretty sorry story if you did, wouldn't it? You liked it. <laughs> he liked it. <laughs> just too much of a sow's runt to admit it. You city folks are a strange lot. You say, shock me. And then when I do, you come crying, oh, I didn't expect that. <laughs> well, if you're such a godsend know-it-all, why do you think I liked it? Same reason anybody likes it. It excites you. It arouses you. And if it did, so what? That doesn't mean I liked it. I mean, did it ever occur to you that different people have different tastes and that it might, in fact, it made me feel ill at ease? The first sign of humanity you offered me were these stories. Stories. Why stories? Well, it's a good way to get to know a person. Entertain you, I guess. So stories are entertainment. Even driving us something, Deeds, get to it. It's not ready yet. Would you let me finish? Supposing I were to go to bed right now as if I had heard no stories at all. Could I? Wouldn't you put up a fight? Don't these stories, as you call them, mean something beyond just entertainment? Just? Yeah, well, no. Yeah, they mean something more than just entertainment to me, now that you put it to me that way. Don't play games. Tell me another one. Why the hell should I? Just a goddamn game to you. It's not important. If it's not important, my stories are not important. If my stories are not important, then why the hell should I tell them? I know a story. The reason why I ask you all those questions was because I know a much better story than either one of the stories you told me. I know a story that will make bats fly out through your ears and your tongue burn. All right, all right. The North Wind hasn't made me deep. But you set yourself a mighty task with that handsome introducement. As you know, the war displaced a good many hard-working families. Some on account of fear of retribution, and some because uh, their homes were destroyed by the noble North. Each family had its own reasons, but many of them quest for new land, feeling that the land they could rebuild their homes and maybe enjoy the good life that was once theirs. Now, these early farmers were willing to work hard for their dreams because dreams were all they had left besides the clothes on their back and the people they loved. This story is about the Hittons, just such a family. The first day they spent in town shopping and meeting their new neighbors, and getting acquainted with the local politics. It seemed that the whole town was from the South. It was a comfort after so long a journey. It was, it was almost like coming home. Oh, whoa, whoa. Take a good long look. Oh, ain't nobody gonna say nothing? Well, I don't know about you two, but I'm gonna get down and I'm gonna put my feet on it. How much is ours? We're going to live here? That's right, honey. That's right. Come here. You see this post here? From this post here, clear on to the next one, way over there. Clear on to the next one, one mile east. We got one square mile of God's country. But where's the house? Oh, Arthur. It's so much. It's too much. 
What's much too much? How will we ever manage? If we only land, we'll, we'll manage. Lou Stalker, Mike Finchley, and Bobby Jeffries, they all said they'd help us out. And I figure when they need us, we'll help them. Other people will help us, too. You're not going to be alone here, Maureen. There's going to be a whole community of people here just like us. You got something to say to me, woman? It is beautiful. So big and pretty. Just like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Yes. Where will the plants go? And where will we put the house? Where will the house go? I don't know, dear. Ask your pa. Well, to tell you the truth, I hadn't thought about that long. I mean, you ask your mother. She has all the ideas. Uh, what about over there on that hill? I thought, wouldn't that be nice, overlooking everything? Put it there under those trees. That would be so pretty in the morning to look out the window and have trees right outside the window, just like the rich people do. It doesn't matter to me. Please, <laughs> Papa. What's in your head? I don't know. I just think that things are pretty good right now. Food's good. I've been through the lard, salt, and coffee, and I don't think there's as much as we guessed there'd be. I don't think there's half a pound of coffee, and I know there's not two spoons of salt. You know what I want to do? When I have my own room and my own bed, I want to paint the walls sky blue. And over my bed, a brass bed, maybe. I'm going to hang a picture of you both. Right over my bed. Arthur, how are we going to make the other payments after we make the first? Arthur. It's getting late, ain't it? It's not that late. It is, I think. I think you'd better rethink. My dear warm woman ain't growing cool on me, now is she? Warm woman never taught her. You're beautiful. And you are shameless is what you are. I'm finished. I'll help you with the dishes. And loving man, what kind of shape will that put you in in the morning? Fine shape. Fine, Jesus. <laughs> Save the dishes till the morning. I knew it. I knew it was too good to be true. I don't. No, he won't. Isn't about time for your bed? I don't know. I don't have a clock. Well, long past, that thing. I suspect your Paul's right. But I don't want to go to bed now. It's our first night. I should get to stay up. What is it? I don't know. Visitors, I guess. Viva, honey, get in the wagon. But, Papa. Arthur! Oh, evening, Lou. Evening, Arthur. Evening, ma'am. We've got a business problem west of town. Wonder if you could uh, help us with it. You wait until the morning. Ma. Shh. Evening, ma'am. Evening, ma'am. Uh, Maureen, honey, you remember our friends from town, Lou and Michael? Just give me a minute. Arthur, you said it was late. It's early now. Can't you gentlemen do without him? Just for tonight. Give me uh, a minute to settle up. Ma, what's going on? Eva, honey, why don't you go in and go to bed now? But, Papa... I'll see you in the morning. I'll give you that book that I promised you. All right. Go on. Get it. Get it. Arthur, you're not going. Murray, I'm just going to be a couple hours now. Come on. I won't let you do this to me again. Tell you what we'll do, Arthur. Uh, we'll go on ahead. You'll be able to find us. All right. Not all right. No. Go, Murray. You said that before this happened again, like it is now, that we could talk it over before you did anything. If there was time. I said, if there was time. Uh, how much time do you need, Arthur, before we can discuss it? You know it's wrong. Wrong! For me, Arthur, for me. It ain't wrong. It's a blind, stupid, woman-like thing to say. It's proof of what I said all along. You have no idea what's going on in the world. You know it's wrong! Sorry. 
I'm right, Maureen. I'm right. Come on! Come on! Where have you been? Are you hurt? Where have you been? Tell me! You're scaring me! All right, honey. Take it easy now. Just take it easy. Let me see. Give me a look. How much did you see? I saw you hitting that man! Who was he? Did you burn him? No. No, Eva, honey, no. Eva. There are bad people in the world. There are people so bad and so evil, the only thing you can do is you have to get rid of them. I was protecting you, Eva. But there was a woman, and there was a little one. He'd have grown up. He'd have grown up to be just as bad. And he'd want to hurt you. He'd want to take our land and rape. You killed them. I had good reason, you Eva. You murdered please. them. That's not murder. They're animals. They're not men. They're not divine, Eva. Eva, honey, please. You don't understand. You don't understand. You are laughing! What is your answer? You killed someone! You killed someone! Eva, them. please, Eva. please. Ah!
It's not what you think. It's not at all what you think, and your pa's not like those other men out there tonight. He senses that it's wrong. Some folks just hate. But your pa knows it is not that simple. I've been working on him. I've been working on him, and I believe he'll stop. We can get him to stop. He's a good man, really. How can you go to him? What do you mean? How can you go back? Tonight, ever? He's my husband. You knew! How am I supposed to understand anything anymore? He will stop. Ma, look at what you're saying! How can you possibly say anything to defend him? He kills people. You act as if it's all gonna go away, like it's some simple thing. Do I have to tell you everything I saw tonight? Don't you know? No. What does a young girl know? What does she know about giving everything you have to your neighbors when you have nothing because they have less than you? Does she know that that man, that killer, who married me anyway, when most men had turned their backs, they did, walked away, no conscience, nothing at all. I had a belly full of baby. That's our work anyway. I wasn't a woman, I wasn't a wife, I... I wouldn't have kept you. You, you were my daughter. And I will always love you. And you're right. He does do unspeakable things. Evil things. But he's my Arthur, and I love him. And you can't. You can't ask me not to love him. If that's what it takes to get him to stop, I can't do it. It'll clear. I'm going into town to get some supplies. You want to come along? I have so much to do here. Why don't you ask Eva? Eva? <coughs> yeah, Ma? You and your pa into town.
I love you, Pa. And as they roll off down the road, its neighboring fields broad and inviting, puts his free arm around her. I love you, Eva, he says. I love you, too. And we're gonna make this a beautiful home. That's it. You know what this means? I like it. Maybe not as scary as mine, but that's not what your story is about, right? I like it! I'm pleased. And don't be too pleased. You put me on the spot. Pardon? Can't you see? I can't leave you telling the last story as being such a good one. No, no. Oh, come on, Morrison. Yours was every bit as good. Mine were good, but yours... Yours was a ripe one. Got me thinking about it. Got me thinking it did. And I won't have it said that a store clerk businessman outdid me. I won't have it said. I'm gonna tell you a story that'll stick to you like an eyeball to a cactus needle. And we won't get any sleep. <laughs> what of it? Would it help if I told you that I'd written a little and you should expect me to be a good storyteller? I'm telling you, I can do better. I won't have a set. Mine wasn't that good. Yours was more terrifying, more, more exciting. Sit down, Morrison. It's not that important. Shut up! I know a thousand stories. I know 2,000 stories. It's a matter of picking the right one is all. Now, you told a good story, I'm gonna tell a better one. Now, it's no large matter, just, just don't try to talk me out of it. Didn't I tell you? It was gonna be a long night. Yes, you did. <laughs> Drink this stuff, will you, Deeds? Don't drink it, Morrison. But it helps me to tell stories better. Don't drink it. Gotta tell one better than yours. Can't take any chances. and four men, actually six, two of them were dead. One of the four alive men looks distraught. The other three are dead the patient. The distraught fellow is Dr. Francis Letterman, both doctor and sheriff of the town. Bill Horn, owner of the Circle H Ranch, has arranged this little get-together. It's a contest to pick a hired gun to be his next top man. Miguel Colaches has won the first two rounds. Not many people attend this little gathering. Too many losers. He's got one left, but he's the favorite. His name is Martin Lauf. In Martin's mind, a killer He's a filthy, brutish beast who bears no resemblance to himself. After all, he feeds well, dresses fine, knows how to treat the ladies. In his work, he is an artist. Graceful gesture of the arm, clap of thunder. One bullet, clean, distant. And that is why he is invincible. 
That is how he stays alive. The idea that he's a killer never crossed his mind. You didn't tell me there was going to be three fights. What difference does it make, Francis? Those men chose to fight. They didn't choose to die. I'm supposed to prevent this. I should arrest you. Try. <laughs> Go home, Francis. We'll be done here in less than an hour. And I promise you, it'll be a fair, honest fight. You've forgotten a couple of words, Horn. Hmm? Stupid! Deadly! Mr. Horn? Mark. It is a pleasure. It was before and it remains one. Meeting Martin Lau, the best gun in the territory. Pleasure's mine. Second best. Que pasa, coaches? See yeah. You should do something about your eyes. On second thought, don't worry. You're going to bed early tonight. Oh, no, I don't think so. I got plans. One bullet? No, six. You say one bullet? All right, nice and easy. Funny man! Adios, funny man! <laughs> the winner of this match becomes my next governor. No better paying job exists, to my knowledge. You'll be a king in your own time. Cognac, women, property, power. Or if you choose, a little savings to help buy your freedom. And as with those other gentlemen, I'll make sure that whoever loses gets a good Christian burial.
You got the job all right, Martin. You're the best. Miguel put up a good fight, you must admit. I'll see he's buried proper. Now I'm gonna need you by sunup to sign the contracts. If you want, you can stay with me tonight. No. No, I got plans. I'll be there. Concierge, bring the clean water and leave it outside the door. By no means am I to be disturbed. It's my curse. What are you doing? I, I can't sleep in this. Uh, get up. We gotta get this cleaned up. Why? It won't hurt you. Listen to me. I don't want to argue about this, Sarah. I want it cleaned up, all right? Mm. Clean it up or get out. Just get out. Okay, I'll clean it up. No, if you won't, you get out. I said I'd clean it up. Listen, you don't want to talk about it. place this morning to firm up the contract. Bluey, I'm sorry I'm late. Uh, just give me a minute. Rough night. <laughs> I got you, but you better hurry up. Old Horn's not used to being kept waiting. Bluey, I'll just be another second.
Martin! Just a second, Bluey. Martin! Are you coming? Yes. I said yes. Hey, Martin! Something wrong in there, Martin? Martin! No. This time, somebody else would have to clean up. God damn. I like telling that. That was fun. God damn. Oh, God, what have I done? Oh, you did this to me. Oh, stick around, man. Hell, I'll be a fool to go out in the desert heat without proper rest. We'll sleep today and head out tonight. Charlie will keep one more day. Charlie? His name's Charlie? No! I just called him that. What are you doing? I gotta get moving. I'm gonna make it to Jacksonville in a week. I gotta draw almost 100 miles a day. You leaving? Yes, I'm leaving. Why don't you come south with me? We'll go by Laramie and... Stop off at Kansas City, where I will show you two of the finest sin palaces this country has to offer. We'll have a great time. Going east, Morrison. Well, you got a whole damn week. Only takes four days to get to wherever it is you're going. Where, where was it? Jacksonville. Yeah. Four days. How do you know? You've never been there. No, but I've been everywhere else in this great country of ours, I'll have you know. Why, well, I've even been to Ekalaka, Montana. Ekalaka. <laughs> Stop. Stop. Don't make me laugh. It hurts too much. Where are you going, Morrison? Do you know? Sure. I'm headed south. Where you off to? Oh, I remember. Don't look at me like that. I did fine without you, you city shit. It was you I was thinking of. You see? See what marriage does to you? You can't spend a day, not a single day on yourself. Hell, man, what's the rush? What? Elaine. Picture I showed you at the beginning of the evening. I'm going east, Morris, and I have to be there in a week. I love storytelling. I love writing. But the only thing that would stop me from going east is someone I love as much as Elaine. And I like you. I greatly enjoyed your stories. But I'm going east. You lucky man, Deeds. You can spare a few fragile moments. I'll see you off. If you ever make it to uh, Seattle, you're welcome to spend a night or two, be a warm bed and a warm room. And no sleep at all. True. Yeah, well, you're still a city boy. Nothing will change that. A good story won't change that. I know. Deeds? I'm gonna be a wealthy man. Yeah, I spent a year looking for this bastard slung over my saddle. Only eight days left. Now, I'm not a professional, but I nabbed this honey when they first came off the wire. Alvin Dudley Raymer. Six counts of murder and two counts of armed robbery. $2,000 reward, dead or alive. Five feet ten, 150 pounds. Coal black hair and mustache, distinguishing marks. Missing fingers. Scarred face, 
Oh, he had a honey right over his left eye. Did you say he was missing fingers? No, I didn't say that. Good. I enjoyed your stories. Come on. Last eight days. Wasn't him. <laughs> 